Are you, are you coming to the tree with a strong upper man? The same murder three. Strange things did happen here, no stranger would it be if we met at midnight in the hanging tree. Welcome to Strange Things with Chris James, broadcasting from the Auxiliary Radio Station for Arkansas Radio in Laredo, Texas. <clears throat> and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Chris James. Things are happening to my show that are hopefully going to be good. I am being monetized so I can no longer say this is just a hobby. My new host is Spreaker.com. You will someday be able to find all of the past shows there as soon as I upload them. This will take some time. I have 252 shows and only 89 are on there right now. I'll keep putting the old shows on as I get the time, working my way forward. Right now I have the last 55 shows, as well as the first 30 or so. Hopefully I'll get them all in the right order. Time will only tell. As I was loading the shows, I discovered Nikolai Tesla's MP3 is missing from my collection. I have the MP4, so now I need to reformat it so it'll fit on the, the new site. I hope it isn't too much work, but it's a learning thing as I go. I'm learning all kinds of things here lately. Like I just learned that now my show is available in India, the other side of the planet. That's interesting. If you're listening to the show and you live in India, just send me a, an email so I know y'all are out there. You can contact me at strangethings at arkanasa.com. Look forward to y'all enjoying the show. I may stop doing my own commercials until I figure out how the new company inserts theirs. I will stop for a few seconds right about the middle to give them space. As I said, things are happening, hopefully good things. If you'd like to check out the new site, you can find it at www.spreaker.com backslash show backslash strange dash things dash with dash Chris dash James on your computer. I know that's a lot of letters and symbols to put in. I put the link on my Facebook page. Or you can listen at iHeartRadio and just search for Strange Things with Chris James on your smartphone. Make it a little easier. The show will still be on all the podcasting sites like Stitcher and Apple Podcasts and all those places, just not on Podomatic. Some folks think life is a bit dull. Others will tell you their lives will never be the same after having a strange encounter with something unknown and unexplained. After I saw that bizarre creature crawling up the retaining wall under the railroad bridge, I keep watching for the next weird thing. It makes taking a drive much more interesting. Maybe people may need to pay more attention to what's going on around them and see if their lives are really as dull as they think. These are all mostly just short stories. I couldn't find a whole lot of information, but sometimes the short ones are the creepiest. Years ago, a man and his girlfriend were out near Odessa, Texas. Odessa is way out in West Texas, and there isn't a lot of water or greenery. You might say it's kind of desert looking. There are some small places with ponds and trees, and folks like to hang out there in their own personal oasis. The couple were enjoying the feel of nature and the cool evening temperatures. 
The young guy had gone for a swim in the small pond, and then he joined his girlfriend sitting under the trees. It was dark, but there were stars and lights coming from the nearby town so they could see the area around them. Out in the water, they saw bubbles coming up. It looked like something was moving around under the surface. Expecting to see a fish break the surface, they watched and waited. All of a sudden, a reptilian-looking creature came up in the water. It was closer to the far side, and it crawled out on the water onto the land. It stood as tall as a man, only it looked like an alligator. The thing was dark, and its skin looked like scales. The back was curved, and it had a ridge. The creature began walking along the edge of the pond. It was going to wind up right on top of them if it continued the way it was going. The couple was frozen in fear. What on earth was this thing, and was it dangerous? As the creature was getting close, the couple snapped out of their stupor, and they jumped to their feet. Once they had managed to move, they didn't stop running until they were at their vehicle. They sped away, asking each other what in the world had they just seen. They knew the owner of the land. He had never said anything about some mysterious creature lurking on it. Not wanting to sound crazy... They did make a few careful worded inquiries as to whether anything odd had ever been seen in the area around that pond. And nothing had been reported. If somebody else had seen something, they may not have said simply because they didn't want to appear crazy either. The couple don't visit that oasis anymore. They try to find some place less reptilian to hang out at. Mid-January 2017, at about 3.15 in the morning, the witness was driving home to Cold Springs, north of Houston. It was pitch black on FM 222, and there wasn't another vehicle to be seen. Not wanting to have a close encounter with either a wild hog or a deer, the driver was paying close attention to the road ahead. Up ahead was a dark figure on the side of the road. It looked like some kind of an animal was having a late-night meal. Being so close to the edge, the driver slowed down in case the animal darted out in front of him. At about a hundred feet, it became apparent this was no ordinary animal. The creature was hunched over some dead thing. Its hind legs were shorter than the front. The front legs looked way too long, and they ended in sharp claws. The body was covered with shaggy-looking hair. The face had long jowls, and saliva was dripping from the fangs. The creature looked up at the approaching pickup. The eyes glowed red. The truck sped past the beast, gaining speed as it went. The creature began to pursue the vehicle. This made the driver give it more gas, fearing this thing might try to get in with him. This would probably have been very bad for one of them. Uh, trying to stay on the road and keep an eye on the creature at the same time, the driver saw this thing was keeping up with him. As the pickup sped over a bridge, the beast lost interest in it and its occupant. Cold Springs is on the east side of Sam Houston National Forest. There have been a lot of bizarre creatures seen in and around the forest. It is also a hot spot for UFO sightings. In the early 90s, two men were driving down Military Highway somewhere between Blue Town and Los Indios. A Military Highway is also called El Indio Highway, Mines Road coming out of Laredo, and 1021. It was about one o'clock in the morning. As they were traveling, the driver noticed several cars up ahead were swerving to go around something in the road. 
A 1021 is used by a lot of oil field traffic, and things sometimes fall on the road from unsecured loads. Wild hogs run the area and sometimes wind up becoming speed bumps. As their vehicle got closer, the passenger noticed something very big and tall walking along the side of the road. The driver slowed down a little and honked, hoping to get the deer or the hog to run into the brush instead of out onto the roadway. The creature turned and looked towards the vehicle. At first, the two men thought they were seeing some guy in a suit. The thing looked just like a Bigfoot walking along the road. As the vehicle's headlights hit the face, the eyes reflected back at them. People don't have eye shine, only animals. The two in the vehicle couldn't believe it. They were looking at a real live Sasquatch. There was no way anyone would dress up like Bigfoot and walk around to this area. Folks living there own guns and know how to use them. Anyone dressing up in a suit and running around would be shot in a matter of minutes. Had this been the only Bigfoot sighting in the area, it might be discounted. A Bigfoot-type creatures have been seen in this area before. There was the Webb County Beast, seen by a group of illegal aliens crossing ranches along Mines Road and Tiendis Road. Not just one group, but several. In the fall of 2018, someone saw a Bigfoot while fishing in the Rio Grande. <clears throat> they were on the U.S. side and the creature came walking along the bank. As it got close enough to see the skin through the hair... The witness was frozen in place. The Bigfoot stopped walking and he knelt by the water. It rooted around, pulling up some vegetation to eat. As he watched the creature eat, the witness pulled his cell phone out to try to get some photos. As he clicked his phone, the Bigfoot looked up. It saw the man standing there and it got to its feet, taking an aggressive stance. Uh, being nearly scared to death, the images all came out blurry. Not wanting to die right then and there, the witness took a run for his truck. Fortunately, the creature didn't pursue him. Just before 2 o'clock in the morning, January twenty second, 2020, a police unit driving on 83 South in Laredo was fogged at fogged, flagged down by a man in a white Nissan. The two vehicles pulled into a gas station on 83 and Pita Mangana. The driver of the Nissan wanted to file a report. He said he was driving from Cuatro Vientos, heading west, just a short time earlier. It was very foggy that morning and traffic was having to crawl along. Just a short distance from the Walmart superstore, what looked like a bear, walking on its hind legs, crossed right in front of him. The thing made it to the side of the road and disappeared into the field to the north. After thinking about what he had seen and how he had described it, the witness said he thought it was Bigfoot. At about the same time, a second officer was taking a similar report from a different witness to the same bizarre sighting. The second witness said it looked like a bear walking on its hind legs crossing the road and disappearing into the brush. Then, once again, the second witness said he thought it might have been Bigfoot as well. Officer Jose took the report. And then he and the other officer searched the area to see if there were any evidence of either a bear or Bigfoot. Once they had looked around enough, Jose called dispatch to tell them the call didn't require any more investigation. This is not the first time Bigfoot reports were made around Laredo. There have been sightings on Highway 59, east of town, as well as out at Lake Alice. If Bigfoot or Sasquatch were a flesh-and-blood creature, 
Could it manage to walk into town unnoticed? If you look down on Laredo from the sky, you can see a vast tract of undeveloped land to the east and north of the store on Pitamangana. This set of fields are connected to more open fields to the east all the way out to the edge of town. From above, the land looks sparse and wide open. Walking around in these fields, you can all but disappear from view by anybody along the edges of these spaces. Uh, some researchers believe Bigfoot or Sasquatch is a trans-dimensional being. It can come and go from our world for some unknown reason, known only to its creature and others of its kind. This would explain some footprint trails that stop in the middle of an area with no place to have continued. Folks report seeing a large hair-covered creature that was there one moment and gone the next. Those of us that think that Bigfoot could possibly be something more than just an animal are referred to as woos or woo-woos. I had to look that expression up to find out what it meant. Uh, you know, it's like the tinfoil hat wearing folks with the UFOs and uh, things like that. For some odd reason, the, the serious Bigfoot researchers uh, think that anybody that has a different opinion from theirs is crazy. Therefore, they refer to us as woo-woos. I get a kick out of it since uh, not a single one of them has sat down and questioned Bigfoot as to what he is or isn't. To the east of Laredo sits Alice. Bigfoot is also known as Sasquatch and has been a topic of discussion for more than 400 years out there. As sightings of the elusive creature have reached the thousands and many of these reports have come from Texas in the 70s and 80s. Ah, that was a little confusing. Not thousands of sightings around Alice, but thousands of sightings of Bigfoot. Alice is just one place. For the last several years, residents in this small town off Highway 44 say they've been hearing strange sounds coming from the brush area on the 247 acres of Lake Findlay, also known as Lake Alice. The Alice Police Department has patrolled the lake but have come up empty-handed. After hearing rumors of the beast in Jim Wells County area, a South Texas Bigfoot investigator Gabriel Guerrero came to investigate the lake. A Gabriel started the South Texas Bigfoot investigations to bring Bigfoot or Sasquatch into the light of day. He also wanted to help Bigfoot witnesses cope with their sightings. He said they're not crazy. They're just crazy stuff out there. In 2012, Guerrero started traveling the country in hopes of seeing Bigfoot for himself. During his travels, he has met and interviewed many individuals who've talked about seeing Bigfoot in locations. I myself have gone out to Lake Findlay and to the Alice Police Department and asked them, and they said, yes, there are hundreds of reports coming in about seeing or hearing a Bigfoot out in this area. Those who cross the hairy creature almost immediately notice a profound difference in size to that of a human. The overall massiveness of the creature, which is hard for witnesses to put into proportion, makes up the powerful build that many witnesses report. Others report a terrible smell permeating the air. Not all Bigfoot sightings have that bad smell. It's only about 30%. However, a lot of people are under the impression that you see Bigfoot and you smell something nasty. The area around Lake Findlay is open farmland. Now, there's really no place to hide during the day. At night, it's very dark, and there are no street lights in the area. The South Texas investigator found what he believed to be several good-sized footprints in the clearing by the lake. He set up a perimeter, and he hung microphones and strapped infrared motion sensor cameras to the surrounding trees. 
Regardless of what you want to call the creature, Guerrero says he truly believes that a species exists that is so smart and that has adapted so well to the arrival of human population that it has become an expert to avoid detection and capture. I myself believe that Bigfoot can see the infrared beams that these motion-detecting trail cams use to fire a photograph. If the creature can see the infrared beam, then it knows to avoid these cameras. It's just my theory, because I have yet to prove or disprove it. I did get to talk to Gabriel in Jefferson, Texas, at the Texas Bigfoot Conference a few years ago. He has a unique idea on his Bigfoot hunts. Gabriel places a GoPro on his backpack, which is aimed back the way he has come. This way, should anything step out from hiding after he passes, it will get caught by the camera. I need to get some stories from him for my next book, but uh, right now I haven't been able to get a hold of Gabriel, so if uh, if you're listening, could you send me an email? I'll, uh, I'd love to talk to you again. In the ner- early 1980s in Starr County, a young boy was out hunting. He lived on a ranch, and he spent much of his free time exploring, hunting, or moving about in the brush. One day, as he was wandering the property with his single-shot twenty two rifle, he came upon a huge creature. At first, it was only the sound of something moving through the brush. The boy thought it was just a horse moving around the property. When he finally got sight of the thing... He knew it wasn't anything he'd ever seen before. The creature was on all fours like a dog, only it looked like an ape, maybe even a gorilla. The fur was a reddish-brown, and it covered the creature from head to foot. He could see the muscles moving under the fur as the thing moved. The boy had always been under the impression that Bigfoot walked on two legs like humans but this thing was down on all fours. And not wanting to be considered crazy, he kept his sighting to himself for many years. Eventually, he did tell his son when he was old enough. One night, while watching a TV show about Bigfoot, the witness was startled to hear an account of someone else seeing a Bigfoot traveling on all fours just like what he had seen when he was young. In 2000, this witness was visiting relatives near Kerrville. The house was out of town and surrounded by trees. In the evening, they would take their dog for a walk, and the witness went along just to have something to do. As they were moving along the trail, all of the wildlife sounds suddenly stopped. It became deathly quiet. The dog froze in place, staring into the trees. They could make out a creature running through the brush. At first, it looked like another dog. It would have had to have been a Labrador, because the thing was huge. The head looked almost like that of a bear. The witness and their relative were overcome with terror. This thing shouldn't exist. It was no dog or anything from this world. As they got a better look, they realized this thing was way too big. The muscles were visible moving under the skin. The absolute absence of any sound only made things worse. Managing to overcome their fear, they got their dog and began moving back to the house. Once they discussed what they'd seen and what it might have been, the only thing they could come up with was they had just run into a dogman. In the late 90s, a truck driver was on his way from central Texas heading to Laredo to pick up a load. It was early morning, about four or five. He'd just come off a string of several days off, and so he was feeling well-rested and... He was not uh, in the least bit tired. He got off of I-35 
and he was driving along one of the many small two-lane roads heading towards the warehouse. The road was winding back and forth through a brushy area. There was something on the side of the road ahead. At first he thought maybe it was just a coyote eating something dead. As he got closer, he could see this would have been one huge coyote. It was now way too big to be any kind of an animal that he was familiar with. The thing was as big as a man, maybe even bigger. It was crouched over a dead deer. The truck driver could now see this man was eating the deer. He was tearing out chunks of flesh and swallowing them. The more he thought about it, the crazier the idea became. The closer he got, the more details he could see. This man was covered in dark brown hair. Could this be a Bigfoot or something else? As he passed the creature, the truck driver saw it was a dogman. It had a muzzle like a dog or a wolf. As the truck was speeding by, the creature looked up. It focused not on the truck, but it made eye contact with the driver. As the two looked at each other, the driver was overcome by the sensation that this creature was intelligent and it knew the driver was in control of the truck. The driver was scared by how the creature looked at him. He pushed harder on the fuel, trying to get as far away from this thing as he could. What strikes me the most about this story is it's in the same area where I had my weird sighting only many years before. It was about summer 1993. A police officer was on patrol at 3 o'clock in the morning. This usual style was, you turn the lights off, and you sneak around the town looking for illegal activity. They're kind of the same thing we used to do patrolling the river. He was passing the school when he noticed the door to the cafeteria was open. He called it in, and then he got out to check for intruders. To get to the open door, he had to climb over the fence that ran around the entire building. Dispatch told him the school security was en route, but it was going to take a while. The officer walked to the door, and he could see it was being held open by a wooden wedge. Maybe the cleaning staff had forgotten to close the door before leaving for the night. Burglars seldom leave signs that they're in the process of stealing. Just to be on the safe side, the officer called dispatch and requested backup. Once the second officer was there, they both stepped through the door to check for illegal activity. They moved from the cafeteria down a hallway leading to the band hall, the gym, the locker room. Then they came to the main hallway. The officer checked with dispatch to see if any alarms had been triggered. They were advised that the motion sensors were only picking up the two officers as they moved from room to room. The two officers waited for the security to arrive so they could turn the scene over to him. As they stood in the main hall, they suddenly heard footsteps running in one of the side halls. The officers told dispatch they had someone inside and they were in pursuit. They moved quickly to the side hall and began looking for whoever had been running. They checked each room as they passed, moving towards the end of the building. The door leading out had a chain run through the handles. A desk fell away from the wall. It crashed to the ground. Both officers drew their weapons and yelled out for the suspect to show themselves with their hands in the air. A young girl stepped into view. As she was about four foot ten, very thin, with blonde braids in a red polka dot dress. She turned and stared at the two officers. The two officers told her to not move 
but she ran across the hallway through an open door. As the girl was stepping through the door, the two officers ran to catch up with her. They were through the door seconds behind her. The room was empty. They quickly checked under the desks, and they checked the closet. There was nobody there. All the windows were locked, and the ceiling was too high for anybody to have reached the ceiling tiles. Both officers knew they had seen her. They both saw the exact same girl. There was no way she could have, she could have gotten out of that room. More officers had arrived and were moving around the outside checking for any intruders trying to escape from the building. The two men inside walked out to the hallway. The girl in the red polka dot dress walked out from the same room. She smiled at them and then darted back into the room. They charged into the room to find there was no one there. As they're standing there looking around, the light came on in one of the locked rooms. Then it went off again. They tried the door, but they couldn't open it. About this time, the school security arrived, so the two officers went to meet with him and try to figure out what was going on. When the two officers told security what they had seen, without missing a beat, he said... Which one did you see, the boy or the girl? The two officers hesitated, and then they said they had seen a girl. The security guard said he'd been, she had been seen from time to time running around in that end of the school. Both ghosts have been seen by school staff as well as students. This has been going on for years. With that, I'm going to take a brief pause and see if the folks at Sprecher will put in their commercials right here. This following story comes from McAllen, and it happened in 2008, about 10 or 12 o'clock at night. It occurred on 29th and Nolana. A three people were driving along the streets in a Chevy Blazer following behind a second car. The driver was mostly focused on the taillights, so they wouldn't hit. The car in front suddenly came to a complete stop. Uh, just as the driver was about to yell in anger by the unnecessary stop, the car took off, speeding away. The driver was still sitting there, wondering why the other vehicle had stopped, when both passengers began yelling for her to go, and fast. As she was a bit confused by the sudden outburst. They were adamant about getting away from that intersection, so she got going and drove away. The two passengers kept looking back as if something might be pursuing them. Later on, the story came out. When the first car had stopped, there was a huge black dog walking across the street. As it was passing in front of the car, it stood up on two legs before continuing to cross the street. The first car sped away as soon as the beast was out of the way. The driver of the blazer had missed seeing the dog due to the bright brake lights. The dog had looked directly at the blazer as it made it to the other side of the street. It then dropped down on all fours and raced away on Ware Road. Whenever the driver is in the vicinity of the weird dog sighting, she drives slowly looking for the beast to reappear. A woman was visiting Meridian State Park northeast of Waco. She was hiking around the lake and enjoying the sights. As she was coming to Bee Ledge, also known as Bee Cave, she realized she was not going to make it back to camp before sundown. The ledge is shaped like an overhang that comes, that comes out from the side of the cliff, and it could pass for a cave, but it's open on three sides. You could shelter there from the rain, but it would give you zero protection from any kind of an attack. 
As she came closer to the ledge, she spotted a dark shadow. It had the basic shape of a man, a really big man. She only gave it a passing glance, putting her full attention on where she stepped so she wouldn't twist an ankle. Hiking in the dark can lead to some serious problems. She began to notice sound coming from the shadow. It was making a huffing sound as if the air was being drawn in with force. It sounded odd, so she turned and looked back at where the shadow had been. There stood a man-shaped creature with the head and the body of a wolf. This was not what she had been ready to see. She let out with a scream and took off at a dead run, even though she could hardly see where she was placing her feet. With a great deal of luck, she stumbled into her camp, still trying to scream and run at the same time. I can just picture that. Her boyfriend met her at the edge of the clearing, thinking she was being chased by a bear or something. As she ran into his arms, screaming, there was a werewolf chasing her. Naturally, he didn't believe her. It had to have been a bear, or maybe even a big dog, or a wild pig, maybe. And she probably had let her imagination get away with her. I'm really surprised she managed to spend the night at the camp. Her boyfriend must have convinced her she was mistaken. If she had actually seen a werewolf, would she have stayed in the park overnight? The next day they repeated the hike walking around the lake. As they were nearing Bee Ledge, she began to feel some of the terror she had felt while running from the creature. As she was all eyes, trying to see in every direction at once. Her boyfriend was just walking along, up until he spotted the prints. The print was way too big for any kind of a dog or wolf. It sure wasn't any bear. Looking at this huge, indisputable evidence of something unexplainable lurking in the woods, he decided it was time they get out of there. They headed back to their vehicle and left the park. April 2011, a woman was walking along West Davis Street in Hebronville. As she was coming to Rondondo Road, this is as far as the street goes, as well as the edge of the town, she spotted a dust cloud over the trees. It was about 5.45 p.m. and the sun was coming close to the horizon. She noticed the dust cloud was getting closer to the side of the road. It didn't look like something cattle would have made. It must have been some fast-moving animal. Still walking, she glanced at the dust a few times until something came into view. <clears throat> About 40 feet away was a two-and-a-half-foot-tall dinosaur. Not just any dinosaur, but a T-Rex. The creature kept running as it passed by on the opposite side of Redondo Road. It was running on two legs, with its tail stretched out behind. The skin was a reddish-brown color. As standing there, staring at something that shouldn't be there, the witness was at a loss to explain what she was seeing. I worked in Hebronville many times during my time in the Border Patrol. I drove up and down Redondo Road a lot, especially after hearing about these dinosaur sightings. The field across from Davis Street is wide open, with just small brush growing here and there. Ranchers in the area have been complaining about cattle that go missing without any trace as to where or how they disappeared. Maybe they were on the menu for the local dinosaur. <clears throat> December 2012, a person reported seeing a pair of dinosaur in Falfurius, about 18 miles east of Hebronville. The description was about the same. People have also seen dinosaurs running around just outside McAllen and in Mexico just across the river from this area. In either 1919 or 2000, 
A driver was heading south on I-37, just north of Three Rivers. A huge creature came swooping out of the sky and passed right over their car. This happened right around midnight. The movement caught the driver's attention, so looking up they spotted a human with wings. The vehicle was moving along at about 65 miles an hour, yet this winged being was passing them, going the same direction. The winged being passed within a few feet of the roof of the car. The driver got a really good look and was convinced this was no bird. The wingspan was about 8 or 10 feet. The skin was very white, but instead of feathers, it looked like the skin of a bat. The human-like arms could be seen along the leading edge of each wing. The driver didn't get a look at the flying creature's face. The wing thing kept going, vanishing into the night. The next time you're out driving at night, try to glance up once in a while to see what might be up there. This is where having a moon roof comes in handy. Just don't forget to watch where you're going. <clears throat> Westlaco, Texas, is just south of McAllen. Back in 1990, the Headless Horseman was seen once again. The witness was 13 or 14 at the time. Her and a bunch of her family were playing hide-and-go-seek. It was her turn to do the looking, so she closed her eyes and counted really loud so the others would know when she was on her way. Once she was ready... She began her search around the front of the house. Not seeing anyone, she walked towards the back of the house to see who might be hidden there. As she rounded the house, she spotted a man on a horse riding through the field behind their home. This rider had no head. It scared her bad enough, she ran to the door yelling as she was no longer playing. This was all just too weird. It took a while, but the others slowly began to filter back inside. They were all wondering why she had quit playing. When she tried to explain to the others, they all thought she was just making excuses for not being able to find them. Her older brother came slinking in with a look of fear on his face. He said he had seen a headless horseman riding through the fields out back. He'd seen the horseman a half hour after she had had her sighting. For those unfamiliar with the whole story, back in the 1800s, right after Texas had won independence from Mexico, the land between Rio Grande and the Nueces River was claimed by both countries. Mexico encouraged bandits to raid the ranches in the area. <clears throat> When a bandit named Vidal stole some horses from Texas Ranger Creed Taylor, it was time to pay up. As an outlaw, Vidal had already been found guilty under sentence of death. Anyone finding said outlaw was free to fulfill the sentence. Now that's where you get the term wanted, dead, or alive. <clears throat> You've already had your trial, whether you were there or not. If you've been found guilty, it's dead or alive. Taylor enlisted fellow border pa border patrol. A uh, Taylor enlisted fellow ranger Bigfoot Wallace and another rancher by the name of Flores. The three men tracked the bandits south to where they had camped for the night. The rangers slipped in and dispatched justice, killing all of the bandits. And knowing this was just one of many bandit gangs, they wanted to send a message that rustling horses and cattle was an unhealthy occupation. They cut Vidal's head off, tied his body to the horse, and sent it south. Over the next year, the headless rider was seen all over the country as it made its way south. The legend was born. El Muerto the headless horseman was responsible for just about every misdeed in the land. 
People would report seeing the headless horseman as it traveled. Some said they even heard it yelling at them as it went by. A bunch of ranch hands in Ben Bolt, which is south of Alice, managed to rope the horse as it drank from a pond. They discovered the body was filled with bullet holes and arrows. It would seem everyone who spotted El Muerto would fire at him. The body was buried in an unmarked grave, and the, horses would, the horse was turned loose to live out the rest of its life, minus its dead cargo. Even after Vidal was in the ground, his spirit was still seen roaming the countryside. People reported seeing El Muerto near San Diego, Texas in 1917. El Muerto was also seen in Freer, Texas, 1969. Now, he has been seen in McAllen in 1990. This is the kind of thing that makes me wish I was still on the Border Patrol. I had access to all the ranches out there, and I had keys to just about every gate. We worked the ranches in and around Freer and Hebronville on many occasions. In a way, I'm kind of glad to see the legend of El Muerto is uh, still alive, even if he isn't. A family moved into their new home in February 2014. The house was in Alamo between Westlaco and Far. It was nice being in their new home. One day, the owner was sitting in his living room. He was facing the kitchen. His ten-year-old son came walking from the kitchen, so the man looked up at him. His eyes were drawn to a figure standing behind the boy. Uh, this person had very long black hair. At first, he thought it must be some girl over visiting his son. Uh, she had on a cream-colored dress that hung down to her knees. His eyes nearly fell out of his head when he saw that the dress was not being supported by any legs. He wasn't able to see the face due to his son being between him and the girl. He knew she was come some kind of a spirit when she turned and walked out through the wall. He jumped to his feet and looked in the kitchen and bathroom just in case he was mistaken, but the girl was gone. When a friend of his daughter spent the night, she told them they had some kind of a ghost in their house. When asked what she meant, she told them a doll had jumped from the shelf all on its own. Uh, some folks will right away say the house was built on an unknown grave. Uh, some will say there had been a murder on the land before the house was built. They say this kind of thing all the time. There are some spirits that we call transients. They move about going from place to place for their own reasons. I get a kick out of people who will make these statements about things we really don't know all that much about. Until we get to ask spirits and ghosts what they're doing and why, all we can say is we don't know why, only that it really is. A family was driving on South I Road near Milpas, Las Milpas, south of McAllen. The adults were in the front seat, and the cousins were all squeezed into the back. Now, this was back when seat belts were just something you sat on by accident. The driver suddenly asked, What is that? Everybody looked to where she was pointing. There was a huge dark figure flying along over the brush. The thing was huge and it had an enormous wingspan. Everyone agreed it had been a man with bat wings. Uh, thinking about it, they all said this flying man looked like the guy from the movie Jeepers Creepers. The witness said his aunt had seen something just like it over the Far Reynosa Bridge. The customs agents working the bridge acted like they knew what it was, but they didn't want to admit what it was. It could have had something to do with the customs agent working up north from there. 
Though not technically in Laredo, the Columbia Bridge is considered Laredo territory. There isn't any town nearby. All the people working at the bridge have to live in Laredo, and the only people you'll find out in the area are ranchers and their ranch hands. In 2008 or 2009, a customs agent was working the bridge. He spotted a man walking across the bridge from the Mexican side. The foot traffic is not allowed on this bridge, only vehicles. Wondering what this guy was doing, the agent walked out towards him to ask if just maybe there was some kind of a problem. Maybe he had broken down and he needed a wrecker. <clears throat> maybe there was some kind of a medical emergency. As the agent grew close to the walker, he noticed the guy was covered in mud. He looked like he'd been rolling around in a mess. The walker began to open his coat. It was full length and it hung all the way down to his feet. As the coat opened, the man stopped walking and he leaped into the air. He then flew away into the night. The agent was so shocked by his encounter, he was forced to seek professional help to understand what he had witnessed on that bridge. A David was driving home after having a few beers. He was a little bit lightheaded, but he wasn't drunk. As he turned north onto McPherson, something hit his pickup, causing it to bounce. He looked in his side mirror to see if he'd hit something, and then he glanced in the rear-view mirror. In the bed of his truck sat a huge creature. It looked like a giant bat, like the thing from the movie Jeepers Creepers. The skin was shiny black and its elbows were touching both sides across the bed of his truck. A David screamed and hit the brakes. This caused the creature to slide forward and hit the back window of the cab. The sudden impact caused him to hit the gas. The acceleration made the creature tumble backwards and bounce out over the tailgate. A David did his best to get as far away as he could without breaking too many speed laws. One person seeing an odd creature might ex be explained away as an overactive imagination. A Judith lived on the south side of Laredo near Highway 83 South. Her and her friend Daniela were sitting outside her home on the tailgate of a pickup. Daniela was facing over Judith's shoulder towards a tree in the yard, but she had her eyes closed while she was laughing. Judith caught movement from the corner of her eye. She stopped laughing and said, Oh shoot, did you see that? Up in the tree was a huge creature. It was all black and its skin was hairless. Shiny, like it was made out of latex. It had huge wings like a bat. The shape brought to mind the thing in the movie, Jeepers Creepers. Judith's mouth just dropped open, and all she could say was Jeepers Creepers. The creature flew right over the two and landed on a tree across the street from them. And Daniela ran to the cab of her truck, but Judith was in some sort of shock and she couldn't move. Daniela had to come back to help Judith off the tailgate of the truck. They walked quickly to the door, and once Judith was inside, Daniela drove away. In 2012, on the south side of Laredo, somewhere around the Silito Lindo neighborhood, a witness saw a huge bat-like creature flying overhead. It was too far away to get a good look, but it definitely was no bird. It had bat wings, and it flew in that swooping pattern that a bat uses. The creature flew away into the distance. In 2016, someone saw a giant bat flying over Laredo College South Campus, which is west-northwest from Cielito Lindo. This took place right at sundown. Once again, the witness was certain that this was no bird. 
It was huge, black, shiny, and it looked like a bat. Uh, people in uh, people up north in and around Chicago have seen what they describe as a giant bat with human body and face flying around. Some say this is Mothman, the same creature that terrorized Point Pleasant back in 1966 and 67. Uh, people have also reported seeing this strange creature standing in the brush on the side of the road. Espejo Molina Road runs from US 83 past Rio Bravo south into El Ceniso. It's a dark drive late at night. In 2019, several people driving along the road reported seeing a huge creature standing just off the side of the road. They all said it reminded them of the movie Jeepers Creepers. Uh, just about every one of these people I've managed to interview. They all said pretty much the same thing when it came to the description. As far as I know, none of these people knew each other. I tried to get all of these stories in some kind of an order. The Bigfoot sightings together in one place and a Jeepers Creepers in another. It makes me wonder what's out there that folks are seeing. The naysayers all tell that people are just confused. I don't think so. The boys in the white lab coats are in for a huge surprise someday when they have their own personal run-in with something they can't explain away. If you have a good ghost story, or a bad ghost story for that matter, something that you heard from your, your relatives or your friends or... Even better, if it's something that you encountered yourself. It could be a ghost story, it could be a UFO sighting, a cryptid, anything unusual, anything that sounds like something I talk about on the show. If you'd like to have it in print, contact me at strangethings at arcanasa.com. I'll put it into a readable matter, make it so that it doesn't sound too bad linguistically, I'll send you the draft so you can read it over and make sure that what I wrote is what you said. Once we agree on the content of the story, I'll put it in my next book. I have yet to figure out what I'm going to call my next book. I was going to call it South Texas Paranormal, but then I started getting a lot of stories from northern parts of the country. So then I thought I would just call it Paranormal Stories, but some people will argue that a Bigfoot isn't paranormal or flying saucers aren't paranormal. So I still have yet to figure out what I'm going to call the thing. Just know that I'm writing my next book and it's going to have some very strange stories in it. Your help would be greatly appreciated. So, uh, send me your UFO sightings, your Bigfoot sightings, your ghost encounters. Just give me the basic details and I'll whip it into shape and make it sound like a good story. And we'll get it in print one of these days. Until next Saturday, this is Chris James for Strange Things. Are you, are you coming to the tree? With a strong upper man, the same murder three. Strange things did happen here, no stranger would it be. If we met at midnight in the hanging tree.